Our partners at the State House News Service keeping a close eye on state of play on Beacon Hill this week. Watch for some pullback at the MBTA's push for fare hikes. Maybe not so surprising after a rough week for writers. Some leaders are now looking for other sources of revenue. And small colleges facing bigger oversight. Governor Baker pressing ahead with his call for more transparency. You can count on News Center 5 with the State House News Service for breaking news from Beacon Hill. Which brings us right now to the OTR Political Roundtable. And of course, you recognize Marianne Marsh. You recognize Rob Gray. Guys, great to have you with us. Let's kick things off with the subject that we normally do, and that's the President of the United States. We'll start at the White House. President Trump is not happy about an investigation into a possible obstruction of justice being launched by a House committee, and the President claims it's just payback from vindictive Democrats. Here's what he had to say. Essentially, what they're saying is the campaign begins instead of doing infrastructure, instead of doing health care, instead of doing so many things that they should be doing, they want to play games. Marianne, issue one, what's the end game here? Well, I mean, remember, whenever Trump uh, accuses someone of something, it's always he who is guilty of it. So in this case, it's Trump who's campaigning, and he has never stopped campaigning since 2015 when he came down the escalator. But now there's a premium on it because it's his only defense for what's coming at him. The Mueller report, the congressional investigations, the criminal investigations, and a whole bunch of uh, federal ju uh, jurisdictions. He has nothing else. And in the end, this is not going to end well for Donald Trump. And I fear or perhaps gratefully, um, he doesn't make it to 2020 and will go down in the ash bin of history. That, that's, that's pretty final and formal there, you know? <laughs> well, that's their strategy, right? They'd love to embarrass him. They'd love to impeach him. The strategy is to try and get the White House back. But what Congress has to remember is that Congress is less popular as a whole than Trump is. So they can overreach here, and I think Trump is on to something, saying they don't want to do health care, et cetera. Um, they, they just want to hold these hearings. That's the danger for Democrats, that they overreach and people say, I'm, I'm sick of hearing about it. Do you think it's going to be a, a, a lightning, explosive, whatever it is, to November of next year, 18, 20, 20 months, wherever that we're, that we're looking ahead of here, as, as we head toward a presidential campaign in 2020? I mean, let's be the clear. Election date? The Mueller report and these congressional investigations will upend the presidential campaign, period, full stop. And until they come out, we don't know what voters will be looking for. So I think it's going to affect the Democratic side and the Republican side. But, but the Mueller report still sits right on the shelf, and we haven't seen it yet. Tick right. Tock. And, and <laughs> I mean... Marianne could be right. It could be so momentous that it completely changes the shape of the presidential election, or people could just dismiss it as part of the noise. We'll ne see. Next yeah. item is the, the there's a new study done in collaboration with the Atlantic magazine that found that Suffolk County, and indeed Massachusetts in general, the most politically intolerant in the country. <laughs> Now, a lot of that has to do with the booming urban hub like Boston, obviously, and a highly educated population. So, uh, Rod, let me start with you. Is the, is the political divide that severe in Suffolk County? I mean, I don't think it is. I think uh, we're probably more tolerant than this study gives us credit for. I mean, four of the last five governors in Massachusetts have been Republicans. So there's a little bit of a two-party system here. It's important to remember we need a two-party system. That's what keeps government honest. Do, do Democrats and Republicans have, have that little in common, Marianne? No, I think Rob hit the nail on the head. Yeah. Out of the last 30 years, 22 of them, we've had Republican governors. So the fact is, when Republican governors or Republican candidates are good and have good ideas, they tend to win. Remember, the majority of voters in this state are unenrolled. And the other thing that I found astonishing about this report is they mm -hmm. said, well, if you drink Dunkin' Donuts, you're Republican, and if you drink Starbucks, you're a Democrat. Oh, well, really? in Massachusetts, yeah, right. we run on Dunkin'. We, we, we run so on Dunkin', on. right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay. They should know better. And we did have Scott Brown briefly right. as a yeah, U.S. senator, too. We did. Too. Right. Right. We did. Yeah. Oh, which yeah. one? Was it Starbucks or was it Dunkin' Donuts? <laughs> Dunkin'. Uh, Massachusetts Congresswoman Ayanna Pressley continues to make headlines on Capitol Hill. She has introduced an amendment that would lower the voting age in federal elections, federal, keyword there, by the way, from 18 to 16. Marianne, is this something that Congress can get behind? Uh, look, I think it's a debate worth having. I'm not sure they're going to get behind it. Remember, if you're 16, you can drive, but you have to be 18 to be in the military, 21 to drink. To me, 18 is a good age mm -hmm. uh, to do to enlist in, or be drafted and enlist in the military and vote. We'll see where this debate goes. As the father of, of two who passed through 16, <laughs> I, I would tend to have the same opinion. But what is I, your I mean, I think 18 is fine. I, I think what this is by Presley is more of a Democratic power grab because 16 year olds don't pay taxes mm -hmm. really don't live independently. They're more likely to be liberal. 
Um, I don't think it's going to happen, but I think there's political reasons behind it. It's not about empowering teens. They can still go out and volunteer in campaigns and, and be very and still active. Be involved. That's right. 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 The next item, Robert Kraft. The situation continues to take on new dimensions. There is a petition for Gillette to actually drop the name Gillette from the stadium in Foxborough. Kraft is lawyering up. He's adding an attorney from the George W. Bush White House, and the issue of human trafficking continues to sit there. The latest information is the next hearing for Kraft. The, the arraignment point will be March 28th, but that could change. Marianne, where is this headed? If this were the misdemeanor everybody said it was in the beginning, and it is not because human trafficking is involved. Just to be clear, the simple act of solicitation Correct. of prostitution, which is a misdemeanor. Correct. Um, but this involves human trafficking. But what is more alarming, I think, should be to everyone, is the lawyers that he hired. Not only one with a Bush connection, but that lawyer is connected to Trump. More disturbing is the fact that Robert Kraft hired Jeffrey Epstein's lawyer, the billionaire who's been convicted of, sol of soliciting and engaging underage girls, not only for himself, but allegedly for others, got a sweetheart deal coming out of it. So if this were just a small matter, why would Robert Kraft hire these lawyers to defend him on this charge if there weren't more coming? And that should be the concern for everybody. Rob, what's your read? There's going to be more of this. There's going to be more about sponsorships, uh, et cetera, unless Kraft decides to plead guilty and apologize and pay some major fine, donate to human trafficking millions and millions of dollars. If he keeps fighting this, he's going to it's going to continue to be in the news. It's going to continue to bleed into maybe next fall in the Patriot season. They may make him do the perp walk on March 28th and appear at this at this hearing because he's fighting so hard. People should read the series, the investigative series in the Miami Herald about Jeffrey Epstein and um, his procurement of underage girls. It will win a Pulitzer Prize. And when you read that story, you'll see just how troubling this is. We continue on the record. Stay with us.